Welcome to the Rapid Bridge, connecting modern minds to the ancient truth of God's Word. It is our goal to connect the modern day people to the ancient truth of God's Word through current language as well as scientific and technological references. Hey Mike here. Today I'm going over Revelation chapter 17, 18, and 19, discussing the spiritual Babylon. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came to me and said, Come, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits by many waters, with her kings and the earth committed adultery. And the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated by the wine of her adulteries. Then the angel carried me away in the spirit to the, into the wilderness. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast who was covered with blasphemous names and had seven heads and ten horns. Um, if you've been following along, you already know most of these concepts. Um, the, who the whore is, is debatable. Uh, perhaps the United Nations, maybe even the Vatican. Whatever it is, it will lead the world astray with nations joining it. Uh, the woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittering with gold, precious stones, and pearls. Uh, she held a golden cup in her hand filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. The name written on her forehead was a mystery. Babylon the Great, Mother of Prostitutes, and the Abominations of the Earth. This could be a successful economic power, but it also has a strong religious or priestly image. It will appear to be God, or be of God, and have uh, started out maybe even trying to do God's will before committing adultery against him and turning to other ways. The Bible says, I saw the woman was drunk with the blood of God's holy people, the blood of those who bore testimony to Jesus. When I saw her, I was greatly astonished. Don't you wish the Bible was written in more plain language and explained itself? Uh, or maybe if you had an angel to explain it to you? Good news, the rest of the chapter says, then the angel said to me, Why are you astonished? I will explain to you the mystery of the woman and of the beast she rides, which has seven heads and ten horns. The beast which you saw once was, now is not, and yet will come up out of the abyss and go to its destruction. The inhabitants of the earth, whose names had not been written in the book of life for the creation of the world, will be astonished when they see the beast, because it once was, now is not, and yet will come. Uh, this comes for this calls for wisdom. The seven heads are the seven hills on which the, the woman sits. They are also the seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, the other has not yet come. But when he does come, he must remain only for a little while. The beast who once was and now is not is an eighth king. He belongs to the seven and is going to his destruction. The ten horns that you saw are the ten kings who had not received a kingdom, but for one hour will receive authority as kings alongside the beast. They will have one purpose, and to give their power and authority to the beast. They will wage war against the lamb, but the lamb will triumph over them, because he is lord of lords and king of kings, and with him will be his called chosen and faithful followers. And the angel said to me, The what is you saw where the prostitute sits are the are the peoples, multitudes, nations, and languages. The beast and ten horns you saw will hate the prostitute. They will bring her to ruin if they were naked. They will eat her flesh and burn her fire. For God has put into their hearts to accomplish the purpose by agreeing to hand over to the beast their royal authority. Until God's words are fulfilled. The woman you saw is a great city, Jerusalem, that rules over the kings of the earth. I don't think this needs any further explanation here. Let's just continue right on into uh, chapter 18. After this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven. He had great authority, 
and the earth was illuminated by his splendor. And with a mighty voice he shouted, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. She has become a dwelling for demons and a haunt for every impure spirit, a haunt for every unclean bird, and a haunt for every unclean and detestable animal. For all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. The kings of the earth had committed adultery with her, and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxuries. The angel previously explained what all this was. The judgment against the world for turning away from God. How can you be saved from this? Then I heard another loud voice saying from heaven, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues, and for her sins are piled up to heaven, and God has remembered her crimes. Give back to her as she has given, pay back to her double for what she has done. Pour on her a double portion of her own cup, give her as much torment and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself. In her heart she boasts, I sit in throne to queen, I am not a widow, I will not mourn. Therefore in one day plagues will overtake her, um, death, mourning, and famine. She is consumed by fire. For mighty is the Lord God who judges her. Where you are wondering how fast the timeline of Revelation moves, yeah, that quick. When the kings of the earth who committed adultery with her shared the luxuries, see her smoke of her fire burning, they will weep and mourn over her, terrified at her torment. They will stand off, stand far off, and cry, "Whoa!" Woe to you, great city, mighty city of Babylon. Okay, so the great city is actually Babylon here. In one hour your doom has come. The merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her because no one buys her cargoes anymore. Cargoes of gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, silk, purple, uh, scarlet cloth, every kind of citron wood, articles of every kind made of ivory, costly wood, bronze, iron, and marble, cargoes of cinnamon, spice, and of incense, frankincense, myrrh, of wine, olive oil, fine flour, and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and carriages, and humans being sold as slaves. They will say to her, the fruit you longed for is gone from you. All your luxury and splendor have vanished, never to be recovered. The merchants who sold these things and gained their wealth from her stand far off and terrified at her torment. They will weep and mourn and cry out, Woe, woe to you, great city, dressed in linen, purple scarlet, and glittering with gold, precious stones and pearls. In one hour such great wealth has been brought to ruin. Every sea captain and all who travel by ship, the sailors and all who earn their living from the sea will stand far off when they see the smoke of her burning, they will exclaim, Was there ever a city like this great city? They will throw dust on their heads, and with weeping and mourning cry out, Woe, woe to you, city, great city, who had ships on the sea become rich through her wealth. In one hour she has been brought to ruin. Rejoice over her, heavens. Rejoice, people of God. Rejoice, apostles and prophets. For God has judged her with, with judgment she has imposed on you. Wow. An economic and political powerhouse. I see that it's not too big to fail. Then a mighty angel picked up a boulder the size of a large millstone, threw it into the sea, and said, With such violence, the great city of Babylon will be thrown down never to be found again. The music of harpists, musicians, pipers, trumpeters will never be heard in you again. No worker from any trade will ever be found in you again. The sound of a millstone will not be heard in you again. The light of a lamp will never shine on you again. The voice of a bridegroom and bride will never be heard in you again. Uh, your merchants were the world's important people. By your magic spell, the nations were led astray. In her was found blood of prophets and of God's holy people, and of all who had been slaughtered on the earth. 
No, everyone is happy about this. Everyone who served God, that is. Remember, earlier in Revelation, they cried out in a loud voice, How long, Sovereign Master, holy and true, before you judge those who live on the earth and avenge our blood? Well, it is time. So, after this, but the Bible continues, after this, I heard what sounded like a roar of great magnitude in the heavens shouting, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for true and just are His judgments. He has continued the great, uh, He has condemned the great prostitute and corrupted the earth by her adulteries. He has avenged on her the blood of His servants. And again they shouted, Hallelujah! The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. The twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who was seated on the throne. And they cried out, Amen, Hallelujah. And the voice from the throne sang, Praise our God, all you who are his servants, you who fear him, both great and small. And then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, a roar of rushing waters and like loud pearls of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah, for the Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made, him, made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given to her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. Then the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, Those who are true words of God. These are the true words of God. And at this I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, Don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brother and sisters who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for it is the spirit of prophecy who bears testimony to Jesus. Uh, so that's the end of the church age for sure. Just another loose end to tie up. Uh, this beast who sets up a kingdom on earth, unifying its people against God, the beast needs to be eliminated before God's kingdom takes over. The Bible continues. I saw heaven standing open and before me was a white horse whose rider was called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire and his head has many crowns. He has written on him a name that no one but himself knows. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword which is to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has the name written, King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Sounds like someone getting ready for an oppressive battle. The text continues. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, who cried out in a loud voice to all the birds of the air, Come here, gather together for the great supper of God, so that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, and mighty, mighty men, and the horses and their riders, all the flesh of all people, free and slave, great and small. See, it doesn't matter how powerful or great you are, if you're not standing with God, you're nothing. Then I saw a beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to wage war against the rider and the horse of his army. And the beast was captured. And with it the false prophet and um, who had performed false signs on his behalf. With these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The two of them were thrown down alive into the lake of burning sulfur. Imagine how epic that would be. 
seeing people had fought against God, picked up and just tossed in the lava. Anyway, uh, the rest were killed with the sword coming out of the mouth of the rider of the horse. And all of the birds gorged themselves in the flesh. See, God even took care of the cleanup crew on this one. But that's all I've got for right now. Um, that was chapters 17, 18, 19. I'll be going over the remaining chapters of Revelation next time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it enlightening, please consider liking, subscribing, clicking the bell, and sharing these videos. Thank you, and have a blessed day.